Greetings, fellow hostages. Captain Black here. Today's topic, policing black folks. I can remember the Rodney King case and people who are in their 20s today will reflect upon the Freddie King riots in Baltimore when they're my age. The common thread is policing black folks. Conservatives will say that police reform is needed, that community reform is the greater imperative. I am on record as stating that the black community and culture are overrun by what I call chocolate clansmen. That said, I cannot ignore the fact that in too many police departments, the color of an American citizen's skin can oftentimes determine how he is treated. Now, just like all black men are not chocolate clansmen, all policemen are not government thugs. Somewhere in the middle, as always, lies the truth. Policing black folks has been, I feel, the barometer for how Americans, period, are treated by government. For people who are comfortable with the concept of if a black person says something that a policeman doesn't like, the policeman is entitled, empowered, and obligated to beat said black person to the ground, I would warn them that today is the black person, but tomorrow, whether you are a Tea Party activist or an Occupy protester, it could be you. Allowing government to have one group that it can wipe its feet on guarantees that government will wipe its feet on all groups. Government overreach, by its very voracious nature, is never content with any one demographic. Soon it will threaten and, and engulf all demographics. Policing black folks is the third rail of American public safety policy. I have a friend here, Brother Al Mims, who is New Orleans' number one anti-crime activist and mentor. He has had a situation where a police officer, despite his acclaim, threatened him, ironically, in a courtroom where Brother Al had brought charges against a citizen, a chocolate clansman, I would call him, who had threatened Brother Al because of his anti-crime activism. Cases like this show that regardless of how meritorious the individual black person, elements in government, and incidentally the officer in question was black, elements in government view assertive black male citizens as a threat. They do not recognize their credibility and they attempt to criminalize them wherever possible. This is one of the sad realities that I would hope conservatives would rally against. If we were talking about a former Warsaw Pact country or a third world dictatorship, take your pick, we would be outraged. But when it's American government, at its most local level in many cases, dismissing and abusing American citizens, we hear very little, even though I must note that from the Ferguson riots forward, we heard a very large consensus of liberals, libertarians, and a few constitutional conservatives who stated that policing had become too militarized and too aggressive. Supporting the police means supporting, limiting their power in instances where it runs contrary to the Constitution and to race relations. Policing black folks will always be the gold standard for how all folks will be treated. Do we need to exercise better personal responsibility? Of course. Do we need to raise subterranean community standards? Again, of course. But when you have police agencies that feel, based on your skin color, that whatever complaints you bring have no merit, and whatever words you utter can be met with force far more quickly 
than other members of the population, that condition cannot be allowed to stand. The two-front approach I favor, opposing thugs in blue jeans and thugs in blue uniforms, is very key in this scenario. A self-policing black community that is not producing this in the stream of criminals on one hand has a far better leg to stand upon when questioning police policies and practices. It does not help your case when you have a rap sheet as long as whatever the main street is in your city. That said, even if you have a rap sheet as long as the main street in your city, you still have constitutional rights. Flip it over. For policemen who themselves may be concerned about certain excesses against certain communities, if we, the black public, and decent people of all colors who support this proposition, do not stand up, do not demand changes in, where applicable, police procedure and or state law empowering policemen, then we're all being derelict in our most basic duty, which is to make sure that government is not an enemy of the people. For as many examples as we can throw into the public debate about black on black crime and black on white crime, blue on black crime, and increasingly blue on white crime have to also be added into the continuum. Remember, the citizen is at day's end the victim, whether or not the perpetrator happens to be another citizen or a government employee. If individual rights are not held sacrosanct, regardless of your color, regardless of your income, regardless of your zip code, then by default we all become hostages. Hostages of a state that treats, at some point, all of us like niggers and not just black folks. So policing black folks has implications which will ultimately affect all folks.